So I think that at, at heart, BIOS is interested in, in working with leaders to create organisations that make the most of the constructive aspects of human nature and minimise the destructive. And the contribution we make to that is to really try and help organisations to have a better line of sight and understanding into the conditions they're creating for people to exercise their judgment and to make wise decisions. And increasingly, if we're interested in human judgment, we are interested in the relationship between human judgment and artificial intelligence and machine decision making. Uh, because we think those are a new set of working relationships which organisations uh, now have as they put these systems into their decision making processes. So the BIOS AI protocol has five key questions to ask for any organisation, any government, any civil service as they put AI uh, into their decision-making processes and systems and we are working with these systems in the organizations. So what's the work we're asking them to do? The first question we would ask is, is the work the AI doing fundamentally advisory? So it leaves the space for a human, a group of humans to say, thank you very much, heard the advice, however it's delivered, but actually I'm going to go this way. My judgment is this. Um, it may have informed the judgment, it may have helped the decision, but in the end, the responsibility is left with the human to make the judgment. The second question we'd ask is around, has the AI been granted authority over any human being? So in a loan officer situation, for example, the decision to uh, make a loan, not make a loan, uh, is there any uh, space left for that individual to be able to go back to a customer and say, well, I've decided we're going to make the loan, but if the machine makes the decision, then the answer is no, there isn't any space. You have granted an AI authority over a human being, some of the time or all of the time. Part of the time they are now being managed by an algorithm. That's a very important boundary space. The third question is, have you granted the AI agency? Does it have the authority to act and commit resource without recourse to a human being? So, for example, in the world's financial markets, with nano-algorithmic trading, where really it's algorithm wars with people's algorithms looking to get a competitive advantage over speed, with no recourse to humans at all. Now, humans have put safeguards around the the, the boundaries of that, but on a daily basis, billions and billions of dollars are traded with no human intervention at all. We have granted those algorithms significant agency. Maybe we've granted agency to write code, to write their own code, one day to repair their own code. So have we granted agency? The fourth question is around abdication. Are we clear when we abdicate responsibility to a machine, to an algorithm? An obvious example will be driverless cars. So imagine you've been in a driverless car for 500 hours, a problem-free driving, and then one day the AI in the car thinks the conditions have got a little difficult, it's a little darker than normal, they're not sure whether that animal is alive or dead on the road, and they think, oh, well, back over to you, Robbie. Well, the idea that after 500 hours, I will have my hands on the wheel with all of my senses primed the way they jolly well ought to be now as I'm driving, it's a nonsense. I'll be watching Netflix. I'll be playing cards. Um, I'll be looking out of the window. I'll be listening to a podcast. I'll be making notes. I absolutely will not have the kind of sensory appreciation of my environment that I have now. I will have abdicated that responsibility. Now, that's not a bad thing, and it may be that we find that driverless cars are significantly safer, but let's be clear when we cross that boundary. The fifth is around accountability. And I think this is one of the deepest, most profound issues of all. Imperfect as they may be, all human systems have a sense of human accountability in them. 
Now, it doesn't mean that people don't sometimes get away with things that they shouldn't. Uh, they do. Uh, these are imperfect systems. But nevertheless, we have a sense that a board, a government, an elected government, uh, an individual, a king, a priest king, uh, is accountable. I do not believe that an AI can be accountable in the way in which a human being is accountable. So thinking about algorithms and is the work that they're doing with us, for us, advisory? Has it been granted authority over any human beings or indeed only over any other machines? Uh, has it been granted agency, i.e. the capacity to be able to act and commit resource, probably financial resource, but maybe programming resource, without speaking to a human being? What have we abdicated to it? And who is it accountable for its work? And can it ever be accountable for its work? Now, those boundary spaces and consistently keeping an eye on those boundary spaces is, I think, what responsible AI governance looks like. And the BIOS concept of vigilant trust is, I think, an incredibly important one in this space. So yes, it's all right to trust, but let's be very vigilant about their trust, and there are some significant questions we need to ask along the way.